cloud. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give Stephanie Knorr and Trey a chance to pitch themselves to y'all. So um, we're going to start with, hope, I hope you don't mind that I'm going to put you on the spot, Stephanie, but we're going to start with Stephanie and her fiction writing class. I'm always ready to talk about myself, so no problem. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. Um, my first novel, The Angel of Losses, came out a few years ago. And since then, I've been writing short stories and um, a handful of essays have come out. And I've also edited uh, an anthology of literary writing on the, well, we call it the time the political crisis, but it's, you know, it's ongoing. There are many crises. Um, and that came out in 2018 from uh, Temple Press. And I also teach at a few different schools in the area. So I've taught fiction and nonfiction at Bryn Mawr and at Penn. And I'm going into my fifth year um, the Arcadia University MFA program where I teach fiction. And I'm excited to do this class because it gives me a chance to uh, do it the way I really like, which is to do a lot of reading along with the writing that we do because I, I think that's really the best way to develop your skills is to read a lot. So we're gonna spend the first half of the class reading short stories and craft essays. And each week is gonna be centered around a different um, foundational element of fiction. So the first week we're gonna be um, reading stories that really exemplify great use of plot and character. Week two, we're gonna move on to prose and voice. Week three is about place and setting. And week four is gonna be dialogue. So um, each week, along with our reading and discussion, we're also going to do writing exercises that are geared toward that weekly topic. And I've set it up so that if, if you are um, new to writing stories or you haven't written stories in a while, you can use these exercises to help develop your story. Um, if you have a million different ideas and want to write about something different every week, that's great too. Um, and then the second half of the class, we're going to be workshopping. So everyone will write a story, 10 to 15 pages, share it with the class, and then we'll discuss it. Um, and depending on enrollment, there might be a little wiggle room. So I'm hoping that if people have, you know, different interests or questions that we'll be able to address them in some way as well. And then we're going to finish up with a class on revision. So we'll read a couple essays on revision, we'll do some exercises. And my hope is that you come away from the class with um, a new original story and a plan for revising it. Um, and then also, you know, the tools and the insights from the first half of the class and from all of our discussions so that you are ready to keep going and bring all of that to your future work as well. So that is the class and I'm happy to answer any questions now or later, whatever, you know, Maya would like. So thank you for listening and um, happy writing. I don't know. Any questions from folks? If not, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, my, I don't know if this is okay too, but if you have questions when this is all over, you can reach out, you know, I'm on Twitter or I guess you can reach out to Blue Stoop too and they can always forward something to me. So if you have questions later on, I'm, I'm around, I'm online, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> thank you. Um, that was perfect, Stephanie. Um, I guess now we can start with also uh, your class, Stephanie, starts September. Let me just make sure I'm right. But it starts I don't September remember. 14th to November 9th. Right, so it's it's Monday nights, six to eight. Um, and I know the, the classes are eight weeks, but because there's a holiday that falls on a Monday in September, um, the calendar, there's eight classes, but it's spread over nine weeks. And then um, I think everybody is saving an extra week at the end in case you need a, a makeup. That's my understanding. Yes, definitely. Um, there will be no class on Monday, September 28th to observe Yom Kippur. So um, this will be a great eight week class over nine weeks and a makeup class just in case anyone misses anything. Um, and again, a reminder, you can apply to Stephanie's class through Blue Stoop's website and let us know if you have any questions at info at bluestoop.org as well. Um, and let's move on. Uh, Trey or Nora, are you interested in pitching next? I wasn't muted, but I can I can go next if that's cool. 
Awesome. Can you hear me okay? Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, yes. I'm having problems with my mic. Okay, hi. So uh, my name is Noor. I use she and they pronouns. And uh, I'm really excited to teach this 101 workshop uh, in poetry. Um, I'm actually an editor too. And a lot of my approach in the 101 workshop is kind of based off how I approach revision and editing, which is that um, anything you learn or apply or decide around craft has to be grounded in your intentions. And so I'm gonna be, you know, basically having intentional like uh, craft elements or literary devices that we focus on each week. And I'm gonna try and like couple those with different uh, things that I think can inform a successful approach to poetry. Uh, how I'm, also how I'm structuring it will um, affect that too. So I'm gonna um, assign, you know, reading outside of class um, about like a half an hour to an hour's worth. Um, and uh, any revision that you do individual will happen outside of workshop, but I want um, to make sure that each intro workshop is generative. And so uh, hopefully kind of level the field so somebody uh, feels like they have a harder time like being independent from jump um they'll have a space where they can guarantee like they'll have some material to work with outside of uh, the workshop um also the reading i'm assigning i'm going to be assigning authors in pairs uh so that we can kind of learn how to draw threads and like draw connection between authors and then extend that to ourselves too in our work um and in doing that kind of like find literary lineage and ways to identify with poets and learn from them and also learn from poets we don't like maybe um that's important too i think um uh, yeah so um i think also i want to um kind of teach beginner and like you know like newer writers how to capitalize off of like the great connect connected community that is poetry and so there will be a lot of discussion of like uh, craft essays and craft talks or reading writing about writing and reading uh there will be um chance to kind of like ask questions and also learn about like what it means to collaborate with other authors and writers and also other artists. Um, kind of like discussions of how to perform and or read poetry and like what the history of that is. Um, there will be some time to talk about like publishing and if that seems like a way to present your work. Um, and by the end of this uh, eight weeks, I, I want poets to leave with um, one either like multi-genre or genre bent um, work or one collaborative piece of uh, poetry that you do with someone else in the workshop to kind of learn how to apply like what you learned about yourself as a writer um, in those contexts. And I also want to, um, I'll be assigning like excerpts from books because of time and people having lives, but I also want to teach um, how to read like a manuscript and to learn from an entire book. So you're going to basically choose one book from what I assign and read the whole thing and annotate the whole thing um, with my guidance. Um, and kind of learn how to learn from poetry, not only as individual pieces, but how they can speak across the manuscript. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be also revising in workshop, uh, but that's not gonna start until the halfway mark to kind of give students a chance to experiment and play without the um, pressure. But I hope that kind of it'll be a very well-rounded and holistic approach to like how to begin to write um, in whatever capacity makes sense for the individual. And if you have questions, you can ask them if you're here or uh, I'm on Instagram at spike underscore Sappho, or you can just ask people for my email, I guess, or something. Great. Thank you so much, Noor. Um, any questions for Noor? No? Thank you. And gonna save the last for Trey. Hi, Trey. Hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here in peace prior two classes sound like two classes I would like to enroll in myself. So I'm, this is uh, exciting to be a part of. Um, my name is Trey Johnson. I am a freelance culture writer for the last, uh, I guess, four or five years now. Um, and then I am a full-time long-standing educator. So I've been everything from a classroom teacher for high school English to a nonprofit executive to a central office administrator in school districts um, and a policy wonk. But uh, my passion and my purpose is in writing and in particular in culture writing. So through the culture essay um, class that I'll be leading you all through, uh, I like to think that the way that I'm segmenting it is uh, kind of looking at a nest of essays and excerpts through self, society, and values. And what I want to do in particular, since culture essay um, and cultural writing in general is such a broad category, um, I want to be able to like, through each one of those kind of vessels, 
showcase you all from a multitude of identities, topics, and viewpoints. Um, different type of what I think are some exemplar essays for us to dive into. So there'll be some assigned readings, of course. There'll be lots of discussion and the discussion less being about the merits of the work, but more about like the why and like the function of like what people sought to accomplish in different things. And then like my hope is to kind of like fast track build you with as many different types of skills, viewpoints and approaches. And frankly, what I want to do is disavow people of the notion that that there is a fixed definition around essays or essay focus um, in writing. I want this to ultimately be about like liberatory writing for you all to explore around what does it mean for you to dive into some of the bright gray and dark corners of culture and find meaningful ways to loft up new conversations and stories and perspectives from it. So we'll hop through everyone from Casey Lehman and Heavy to Hilton Niles and some of those white girl stuff. We'll look at some smaller, more explicit um, culture essays that focus around everything from food to technology to film to sexuality. But uh, what I, I'm hoping to comfortably do is flood people with um, a wealth of different types of culture essay um, and excerpts to inform your fluency about what can be possible for you about the tell the, tell the stories that you see and observe in your heart all the time. Um, interspersed throughout that, probably in particular, uh, getting more heavier towards the back end is doing much like what the other instructors have talked about, is some smaller explicit um, writing uh, assignments. So we'll probably, I'll probably tease out from time to time asking um, participants to try their hand at certain types of cultural essay writing, small, small shape, small form so we can kind of like dive into some things together and then i really want this to be about like in terms of an ending product i really want this to be to be cultivated around your purpose and your needs so ideally you can either produce a long one particular long form essay that you want to stand up on its legs that we would workshop and help get to um as close of a finishing line as possible by the end of the class or you can explore doing two smaller um, explicit essays around any variety of topics or interests that you want. But I want you to at least to have, I want participants in the class to at least walk away with some type of ready form artifact that gives you a launching pad to do more writing ongoing. Um, the last thing I'll quickly say is just like everyone else has offered, like please feel free to reach out to me through either one of uh, my social media uh, platforms. So both Twitter and Instagram, I think I am Trey underscore John underscore sun. So feel free to reach out to me through either one of those. Great. Thank you so much. Um, maybe a way to like sort of also get more of a taste of um, all of the teachers for this fall session is um, I want to ask all of you, what is um, one last piece of writing that you have written that you have really enjoyed and like maybe provide more context to it just to like get a sense of like what y'all are interested in in writing. Um, anyone can start. I unmuted myself. Um, so uh, I have been working on a, um, a long short story, although a friend of mine read it and she was like, it does not need to be this long. So I'm not sure how it's gonna end up, um, but it's about, local legends and ghost stories. I write a lot of speculative fiction, sort of like um, crossing that line between literary and speculative. Um, and it's been really exciting for me to write more about this place. I'm from Philadelphia, but I've lived elsewhere for a while. So to really dig into um, the setting that's around me and society and, and culture and what stories we tell here. So that's what my work has been focusing on, on recently. But um, as a teacher, I've read all different kinds of work. So um, at Arcadia University, I read I, every genre of fiction. So that's where my own work uh, leans, but um, I'm used to teaching and reading and discussing all kinds of things, if that helps. Nora Trey. Anyone uh, can sort of keep it in the, uh, the order because there's the order. Um, well, I was trying to think, but I'm so I'm an abolitionist, which means that I believe that prisons need to be abolished because they don't work and they're trash um, and they're expensive. So uh, 
I was, uh, but I'm also a poet who's really, really interested in like uh, messing up language structures uh, in hopes of like kind of finding more true expressions and like kind of acknowledging very aggressively like the limitations of language and specifically English as a colonized person. Um, so I wrote a suite recently of poems uh, that are kind of like using very subtle um, mess, like messing up uh, punctuation and finding other ways to kind of like use repetition and to also like flip syntax on its head um, to really try to get into what it means to be an abolitionist when you're not talking about prison and kind of like how can you talk about your own community um, in ways that are nuanced and like can you ever exhaust how detailed it gets. Um, so a lot of these poems like are flipping things on their head or like are using the same sentence structure to say something else on the next page. Um, and they end with uh, two poems that, uh, well, one is basically um, about, I got in a fight because this woman was transphobic and I felt really bad because she was like a black woman and I was really sad that um, it got that intense with her. Um, and I don't regret defending myself, but it was sad to me um, that, that happened. And so I wrote a poem um, about her that starts with my sister, who is also a black woman, um, and ends with her. And then in the second poem, um, that poem is called Ask Me If I'm Sorry. And then it kind of ends with a poem called I'm Sorry, uh, which is basically trying to acknowledge that like I can be okay with defending myself and still need the violence to exit my body or else it'll just stay and like kind of perpetuate itself in the community and like in myself and kind of uh, I like the idea of like making a statement that starts with a poem about like the community and ends with a poem about like my duty to myself um, and letting those two things kind of become the same by bending language and like making a path with the choice I make around structure. Thank you. That sounds really cool. And yeah, I also feel the abolitionist bent. Hell yeah. <laughs> Trey? I just want to go on record, add me to the abolitionist bent as well on here. Um, prisons, police, all that trash, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but also, uh, I, I think the question was like about uh, something that a work of ours that we're really proud of, have kinship with, something like that. So a couple years back, I started, uh, when I started out, I wrote an essay called Under the Cherry Moon through the block space of Philadelphia Printworks back when they had like a pretty fully fledged uh, block space. And it was, um, it was about, it was done in response to my um, relationship to experiencing um, the movie Moonlight and delved into, I think a couple things that, which I'm hoping like our class will explore together too, is how do you meaningfully talk about the nuanced relationship you have with art and how do you use that as a vehicle to tell fuller stories about yourself um, through a place of both like rejuvenation and restoration of your humanity, but also acknowledgement around the things that did not serve you and the people who did not serve you along the way. And so uh, it's, you know, I've had many pieces that I've been proud of, but I think that one because of its intimacy and because of the way that I like push myself further out onto a branch on it. Like, I think that's something I, I that's a piece I stand particularly proud of. And it's one of the ones that people find um, stick with them the most too. So I'm hoping to help other people unlock like the fuller stories that like all of us are entitled to our full humanity. So I want to make sure that we've curated space together where I'm helping people do that type of writing as well too. Nice, thank you. Um, thank you all for sharing. Anyone have any questions, have any curiosities, or anyone feel like they just wanna share what they've been writing or anything that they're interested in? This is supposed to be a happy hour, so trying to have as much free will and conversation as we can, even on a very uh, limited internet sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanna say thank you to all three teachers again. Um, and just to reiterate, Stephanie's class starts September 14th, Trey's class starts September 15th, and Norris starts September 16th. Um, and you can apply through our submittable link that's found on our website. And I can also put it in the chat. But in a way to sort of transition out of, um, how is everyone else doing? Like anyone writing, anyone feel compelled to share? Um, if not, I can always start and just keep talking and being sort of a lot, <laughs> but um, 
I've been writing a lot about chronic pain and illness, especially during this time of um, just like COVID and just like health in general. And what does it mean to be a black person in pain and with an invisible illness? And how does, what are the implicit biases of the medical industry to black and brown folks? Um, and that's been something I've been doing a lot of research and writing and poetry about. So if anyone else wants to join in. Uh, well, I guess happy hour. So cheers to everybody. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for all for uh, explaining what you're uh, going on with the classes. I think it definitely sound uh, interesting. I'm really, really interested in uh, Stephanie's class. Um, definitely quite curious because uh, I, mean, I, I, when I looked at your bio that they had sent out earlier in the previous link, I selected and they looked at your list of publication uh, places you've published and said, oh, I've been re rejected by all of them. Oh, that's exciting. That would be fun. I, I've probably also been rejected by all of them, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, there are plenty who have, yes. But yeah, I do a lot of speculative fiction, so uh, I'm definitely very interested in uh, that class. So you might see me then. kind of all depends on whether I can get that Monday schedule working. So hopefully I will be able to figure that out by this week and you know, apply. But yeah, I've been doing a good bit of writing there. I, like I said, I when we first came in, I just finished a new, a first draft of a new uh, speculative story. Had kind of a weird, uh, weird Western vibe to it, which was kind of fun. Something I've never done like that, but you know, it was cool. But then I've been doing a lot of, uh, I do a lot of humor writing. That's most of what I do. Uh, and so I ended up recently finishing up two kind of short satire uh, pieces. I usually end up getting something current events related that inspires me, you know, and uh, sent, so sent those out and uh, we'll see what happens with them. It's kind of what I've been doing recently. And then next, who knows what, I'll figure something out. Thank you so much for sharing, Steve. Um, anyone else interested in sharing? You don't got to. Um, I can go really quickly. Um, so I, I'm very new. This is only the second blue stoop thing I, I've been to. Um, my name is Derek, key him pronouns. Um, I, I'm actually from Philly, but I live in Brooklyn now. Um, I moved here just after blue stoop, I think started and I was kind of bummed out that um, I wasn't around when this got underway. Um, but um, I, so recently I've been, I've been, I don't know if working, working makes it sound more serious than maybe it is. I'm, I'm trying to get this going, but um there's um, there's an idea that has been floating around in my mind for like a kind of essay for a while that's um, that kind of uses it's like in a way it kind of has elements of like memoir like it's pulling from like certain experiences I had as a child but it's it's trying to get at um, some questions that have interested me for a long time like really like philosophical questions about um, um, like the nature of desire and how like we like the the things that we kind of look to find in like certain narrative. Um, structures that like are satis satisfying to us versus others um, but just basically I'm looking back at certain experiences in my life and trying to make sense of this in relation to these bigger questions but also in a way that kind of engages with how some of the the stories that really capture my imagination as a child like as a, as a white American who was being raised in kind of a very like politically conservative environment like how those things were steeped with racism and you know colonialist mentality and all this sort of thing and like sort of grappling with the fact that that is part of my imaginative heritage and what that means for me now so yeah but yeah it's not it's not it's not a real thing yet so hoping this will actually happen sometime soon thanks so much for sharing that sounds amazing um anyone else interested again you don't get it <laughs> I can go really quick. I'm actually also really new. I'm, I, this is also, yeah, I, I, I just joined um, the uh, flash fiction class. I took, I was part of, I just did the flash fiction class. I happened, to, I don't know, a couple months ago. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And I'm not much of a writer. Um, like I've done some writing and I like doing it, but I, I, I don't have too much experience um, like you guys. But um 
I enjoy reading and I enjoy writing when I do it. So I'm looking forward to maybe doing the um the the fiction writing class. So with Stephanie. So yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sharing and for um, also like, pre like presenting yourself, especially when you're new. Um, I also found out about Blue Stoop right after I moved out of Philly and then I came back and I was so grateful to like be a part of this community again and like um, still be a part of a literary community despite everything. Um, so everything that everyone's working on is so awesome and I'm really excited to see what happens in the next couple months with it. Um, that's all I had to really share with the happy hour and again so very thankful for the teachers to come out. Um, on this note we can keep talking or we can say have a nice rest of your Sunday and a nice rest of your drink if interested. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, I mean, I've been coming to the blue stoop things for a while now actually the very first one i went to was for the one year anniversary party that they had in person because i remember the first one i showed up to they had cake for me and it was great um and i've really enjoyed it so for the two of you that are new it's uh you know they they've uh, there's a real nice community that's kind of kept me coming back so i hope to see the you know all of you more and more uh I've been enjoying Maya's Wednesdays on the stoops when she does them. Um, and you know, then there's these. So, you know, it's it's real nice to have an actual community because I don't know any writers in person. You know, I don't have no one in my family who's into it. My friends aren't, you know. And so I've been trying to reach out and get to know other people who uh, do this sort of thing just to make some friends and, you know, just, you know, especially now when kind of locked in and not doing much and going out. So it's okay, there's time to write, but not much time to socialize with people. So it's good to meet people and enjoy them, you know, and hopefully at some point get to know some people who uh, I can figure out how to get some, uh, uh, you know, like share some work with each other and do that sort of thing, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I appreciate all of you showing up and having a little uh, human contact, even if it is digital. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and goodbye to Noor. Um, and I think that's a really great uh, entry way to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and have a good Sunday night. Thank you all for Thank coming. You for Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the teachers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.